I think that first started working on this in earnest about a year and a half ago, two years ago, um, shortly before the discovery of the writings. But once I had the writings, when Jerry Goroboy, Louise's longtime assistant, had uh, given me permission to look at the writings, I knew that this was going to be the kernel of the show. I had been in dialogue with Adriana Rosenberg for a long time about doing a Louise Bourgeois show in Buenos Aires at Proa, and it just seemed like the perfect fit. So it's really been in the last year and a half, though, that I've been working full tilt on the show. The shows that I do, I try to have a, a, an idea of precision, but also of poetry in the installation, the presentation, and the catalog, and I hope that this show achieves it. I feel very, um, I'm very pleased with the installation. It's a little like what I imagine it's like, it would be like to be inside of Louise's head. It's, it's also the way Louise had objects installed around her house. So it's a bit of an, you know, an homenage to Louise. It's kind of a valentine for her. This is the first major show of her work that's happened since, uh, since she died last May. So in a way, I hope that the show is a great you know, testament, a memorial to Louise Bourgeois. I think it's interesting, this idea of realism because Louise's objects are, at first glance, very recognizable, but when you pay more attention to them, they turn out to be rather strange. I mean, this is recognizably a spider, but it's like no spider that ever has existed. So it's really distorted. There's a kind of expressionistic um, transformation of the spider, which makes it singularly hers. And in fact, I think this spider has Louise's line, the line that, with which she draws. So one of the things that connects it to me is that there is this kind of unique um, Louise's sculptural sense is very strong, very distinctive, and it's evident in this piece. Another thing that connects it to the works inside is that it has this, um, I think it has this um, very theatrical quality. There's something about the sheer scale of the spider and the possibility of, for the spectator to walk among the legs, to enter, interact with the piece that connects it to works in the show, like, for example, the spider cell but also um, the reticent child, which has a large concave mirror along the back and which inevitably involves the viewer in what he or she is looking at. Um, Louisa was always interested in the idea of a dialogue. She wanted to have a dialogue with other people, with the people in her life, with her past, with her psychoanalyst. It was always important for her to, um, to have another person because without, a, without the person, there, she could have no identity. Identity can only be formed in relation to others. And, that's why Louise said, if you, are, if you will be a mirror to me, I will be a mirror to you. Help me to know myself and I'll help you to know yourself. Well, I think psychoanalysis has been lumped together with the, um, it's obviously not viewed as the singular evil that Marxism supposedly is, but it's been lumped together as a theory that attempts to explain too much. So that like Marxism explains, as just as Marxism explains everything as being rooted in, in, in class conflict, supposedly psychoanalysis interprets everything in, in, in light of early, you know, sexuality and early child development. Well, this is superficial and I think it's misleading. It's, it says something about the temper of our times that, you know, psychoanalysis is still, is really one of the last unified theories of human behavior that actually bears some kind of relation to the real world as opposed to being a merely theoretical construction, which is what I think a lot of postmodernist thought really comes, it really is in the end. It's intellectual pirouetting and this is wonderful in the academy, but what application does it have to the lives that we're actually leading? So I think it's an interesting moment to reevaluate the, the, the nature of psychoanalysis and to weigh the impact that it had on one of the greatest artists of the 20th century. Well, this is the second show I have in Buenos Aires. The first was the Andy Warhol show at Malba. And um, of course, at first glance, they seem to be completely different artists. And of course, in the way that they've been received, they really are. But I think what connects them is an intense uh, pathological singularity, which is less obvious in Warhol's case because it's covered over with images and iconography from popular culture. Whereas with Louise, the psychological dimension and the fact that it is the expression of a, of a very unique psychology is very clear and probably indisputable. I don't think, um, so I don't know that they necessarily have so much in common on a formal level, but I'm interested in artists who one way or another register a very distinct psychology.